Paul Corto Star is about to enter his seventh season over fences and we're now just days away from his reappearance in the Grade 1 at Down Royal. So what shape is he in? Yeah, in good form. Um, very happy with his prep. Um, obviously done a fair bit of schooling since his fall at Cheltenham last year, both at the back end of last season and now Ruby came out to sit on him a couple of times there. We're very happy with him. If he had one really big target for this season, what would it be in your eyes? Well, the King George, obviously, um, and when we, he's won it four, to win it five would be a record. It's always nice to do something like that, but, you know, that's obviously, I want to get him at Kempton on Boxing Day in the best possible form. There's been talk in, in one quarter about both him and Denman uh, dodging uh, Imperial Commander up at Haydock in the Betfair chase, but presumably one thing you wouldn't want is for Corto Star to go and have a really hard race against anyone a few weeks before a King George. No, I don't want to do that. And I mean, obviously, Imperial Commander, they'll have a sham at the top of his game because they want to win the race. I, I think Corto is better at needing the run and improving enormously. And we're not dodging it at all because I think we'll take it a fair old challenge and what a friend. And uh, I just, it's been my preferred t targets really is for uh, Corto to go to Dan Royal and Denman to go for the Hennessy. I mean, things might change if the ground isn't suitable for no right targets but in a moment that's what I want to do. Now it's great news for racing that Denman may well try and win the Hennessy for, for a record third time but he'd be off a what, eight pound higher mark this year than 12 months ago. Yeah he would be he's always used to carrying big weights and end of the day you know he's a gold cup winner was second in last year's gold cup and won last year's Hennessy well beat what a friend giving him all that weight and then won two grade one so the form's rock solid he goes well fresh and he loves the track and just the nature of the race suits him but yeah it's going to be a huge task for him um you know just because they're going to be some really smart young horses lurking at the bottom of the weight and uh, you know you say that he didn't put on quite as much weight over the summer so he, he it's been a little bit easier getting him ready for his first run yeah and he, he came in for whatever reason a lot better ruby had to sit on him the other morning was very very happy with him thought he'd felt as good as he ever felt him and um he appears to be, you know, loving his schooling and all everything he's doing. So we're happy with him. But you know, I'm not going to go to Newbury like I was in the in the A on sort of half fit and needing the run. You know, he's going to be there, bang on, ready to do his best. And obviously, his his, his seasons are, are getting numbered now. So we might see him a little bit more often in action this season. Yeah, I think probably by running him in the Hennessy, then leaving him off and going to uh, Newbury in the spring when he was really sort of half a bit sleepy and not ready, is not going to suit him anymore. And I think he probably could run once a month. And as you said, he's not getting any younger we just well run him so you know and don't yeah, there are plenty of races he can run in Cheltenham's Newbury's Leopardstown so we'll, we'll, we'll I would like to think we'll run him a few more times. Now Masterminded has had a breathing operation over the summer do you feel that that was perhaps one of the factors in why he, he lost his two mile crown? Uh, I hope so um, although I, I, it's not totally conclusive I mean you know I think I think the breathing probably is more of a problem to him than what we found that rib injury because he got over that and won the game spirit and then still disappointed at Cheltenham. Definitely wants softer ground now. Um, until he runs, we're not going to know. I mean, he seems in good form at the moment, but as much as I can be hoping and thinking until we run, none of us are going to know. And have you got a first race in mind? Um, I suspect he'll go to Ascot for, I think it's the Amlin Chase on the 20th of November. Two to mile three, which would be interesting because it, it just could open up a few more doors if he gets further. But I just want to give him a run for, for the Tingle Creek and that's two weeks beforehand. If the ground's okay, that, that's our target. With big bucks, you, the, the intention is to follow roughly the same plan as last season, is it? Yeah, he's going to go to Newbury on Hennessy Day, then probably the long walk at Ascot. Whether we run him somewhere before Cheltenham, I don't know, depending on how things are with him, then Cheltenham and Aintree. And you know, this time next year we may look at a chasing campaign, but at the moment he's hurdling this year. And assuming the long walk is run at, at, at Ascot, will that be the first time he's gone right-handed? Yeah, it, it will be, it, and it is a little issue. Over fences, you'd struggle going right-handed, I think. Um, over hurdles, it won't be so bad, but it was just one question mark. You know, you'd have to, I'd have in my mind, but he'd probably be good enough to get away with it anyway. It's, it's big galloping track, Ascot.